this is me, blissfully unaware of all of the trials that are about to await me in this video. How did I get here? Well, it all started with a challenge. Oh yeah. Oh no! Howdy hey, I'm Hippiotech, and this is the ultimate keyboard showdown. We were challenged to build the best keyboard possible with only $100. The winner gets bragging rights and that's about it. Thinking $100 was too easy, I upped the ante and made it so it was $100 only on Amazon. Oh, and if you like this video, there's five other YouTubers doing the same challenge, but in different ways. So check them out down below. If you're on a tight budget looking to build your first keyboard or just looking for shenanigans, then stick around, this one's for you. Any last words guys, no? All right, so let's start the keyboard showdown in three, two, one. I want you to look down right now. YouTube might have unsubscribed you and I'm trying to hit 250K by the end of the year. Click that button. If you clicked it, you get an extra howdy hey. Howdy hey. For this challenge, I'm gonna have to pull out all stops to make the best sounding and looking keyboard possible. As we've got some good contenders here and they're probably gonna pull out some stupid spicy stuff from Taobao. In my case, because I limited myself to only Amazon, I went with basically the cheapest keyboard possible. Like seriously, this thing was $19.99 and I've seen it as cheap as $10 with coupons. If you want to follow along at home, then check the description for affiliate links to buy all of these products used in this video. Anyways, this is the EU So. I'm just going to call it the E for the rest of the video. The E is incredibly poorly built but it's really trying its best. It's a 10 keyless keyboard, meaning that it keeps these arrow keys over here, and it's got an interesting surprise in it. It's got no real special bells and whistles. I mean, the cable is connected, you can't disconnect it. The keycaps are really terrible quality, and we're literally only gonna be using this thing for the case and PCB. But $20 for a case and PCB is still a decent value, depending on the mods that you can deploy to it. And we're gonna be deploying a lot of mods in this video, like seriously. Some of them are brand new and I just invented them. If I was on a disturbing budget, like trying to keep under $25, then I would get this thing with red switches and mod out the red switches. However, because I have a limit of 100, I'm gonna be doing something even spicier. Also, here's some foreshadowing. These feet have holes in them, oh no. But you know, flippy feet, hey, that's pretty, wait, RGB? This thing has RGB for only 20 bucks? Yeah, this thing is sick, honestly. Like, if this was around when I was a kid, I would have gotten this instead of a Razer keyboard and saved my parents like 150 bucks or whatever. Okay, so the RGB has swooned us, but what hasn't swooned us is these switches that I'm about to show you. Oh no. I guess they were taking notes when they saw the Keychron Q1 because this thing is incredibly pingy. So we're going to fix all of that. Our goal here, more importantly than building a cool keyboard, is the best sounding keyboard. So I removed all the keycaps, which was a little bit annoying. Uh, the case was kind of getting in the way there. And this reveals these knockoff blue switches. These are irredeemably bad, and I have no interest in trying to save them. Like that would be a waste of my time. Also, these plate mount stabilizers are quite, quite awful, but we're gonna revisit them and make them amazing. Like seriously. So this board is hot swap and I was gonna do some cool hippio tech remove the switch magic But I just had to stop this here to say how annoying it was to remove switches from this keyboard. They are stuck in there Good. So if you buy this thing be very careful removing the switches. I wasn't I wasn't careful at all Like honestly, I never want to see a blue switch again real Anyways, after removing the switches, we get to see what's a little bit unique about this board. So for those of you new to keyboards, some keyboards require you to solder in the switches, and some keyboards don't. The ones that don't are called hot swap. These are hot swap, but with a big asterisk. They use a socket that only supports some type of switches. They need to have smaller pins, like the Echo CS switches. And we'll talk about the sockets a little bit more later, and why they're so frustrating. Because they are. But first, let's take care of the case. To fix the case, we're gonna need to pull this thing out. And I got a lot of my inspiration for how to mod this keyboard from Keyboard, he's a YouTuber. Make sure you check him out, he did a great job on this one. So the top pops off with the plate, and then this reveals the PCB and a very, very hollow case. Now, to make this PCB good, I have a secret. Ladies and gentlemen, wait, is that press and seal? Yeah, it's press and seal, this is the Hippio mod. So I've seen a bunch of different variations on the Tempest mod, which is taping the bottom of your PCB. But for this, I've decided to create a seal around my PCB 
using press and seal. Now, I'll let the sound test at the end of this video speak for itself, but this definitely is fire. This is a fire method, my brand new method. But let me do a massive asterisk here of you probably shouldn't do this. This press and seal is very staticky and you have a very high chance of accidentally shocking your PCB. So I don't recommend it, but I'm gonna do it because I don't care if I zap a $20 PCB. Anyways, I just press and sealed both sides, the front and the back, and then sealed the corners off. This is basically like putting PE foam on the top and tape on the bottom, but all at once. Next, I just made a tiny little cutout for the cable to plug into the PCB, and then we were good to go. This is definitely my silver bullet and why I think I'll win the challenge. But we're not getting out of a video without tape, right? No, no, no. So this case is unapologetically uh, This case is unapologetically hollow and I'm gonna be using some tape on the bottom of it. Now this is gonna serve two purposes. One, it's gonna keep the cable safe for the next part that I'm gonna be doing. But number two, I'm hoping it'll make it a little bit less reverby. Wait, we're outside? Hippio's allowed to go outside, that's a thing? Yeah, so I've sealed up the case with this painter's tape, which I don't think is a very good seal, but we'll find out soon. And I'm gonna be doing a silicone pour, which I have not done in a while. If you want to pick up some silicone, I've also put it in the description. So the silicone comes in at around 13 bucks, the press and seal was about 4, and the painter's tape is also about 4. I don't think these extras were part of the challenge, but I'm counting them just for fun. So I just used some basic two-part silicone, which you mix together in equal ratios, and then you mix for like 5 minutes. I really just eyeballed it and didn't have a precise amount that I was like aiming for here, and uh, that was probably my downfall. I just vaguely poured, and also I'm dumb because I covered my angle that was good for the camera, but you know, we really tried our best here. I haven't filmed outside and it's been like since January, oh my gosh. I think I need to do some more DIY content to get outside, so make sure you leave a comment of what you think I should do. Anyways, I tried to get as even of a pour as I could, and I tried to make sure I didn't cover any of those standoffs. I definitely poured too much though, and I'll have to fix that later. <sighs> Speaking of fixing, I attempted to fix this carbon air filter to the plate, but there was no way that it was going to work and allow switches to go through. This was hopefully to dampen it a bit more, but that, yeah, no go. But then, new Hippio mod time. This is a new mod, everyone. I had the idea of painting my plate with silicone. Now you're probably going to think this is crazy. It's going to ruin the plate. The plate's not going to work somehow. But hold on, just hear me out. With a thin layer of silicone all along the plate, It'll make it so you don't have any plastic on PCB contact. Instead, the only contact being made is going to be with the thin layer of silicone, which will hopefully dampen or at least absorb some of that shock and loud reverbiness. I guess we could also call this the Hippio mod too? I don't know, this is probably my most ingenious mod here. Granted, in most builds it would just be a better idea to use foam in general, but the silicone is good if you don't have a lot of room to work with. For example, because this plate has those little raised bits, there's no way you're going to fit foam in there, which would be a sad time. Anyways, uh, we're 24 hours later, and the silicone has hardened. Did it, like, seep through the bottom somehow or something? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know what? Here we go. Here we go. Scuffed. This is actually, it's going to dampen it. It's going to dampen it peels right off, you know? Oh yeah. Oh no! It leaked through the vents! It leaked through the vents! Oh wait, through the... Oh ew, it's still gooey, ew. So anyways, yeah, we had a bit of an oopsie. Apparently Andy did the same case and did a silicone pour and had a similar issue, so check out his video. Basically, my tape seal wasn't good enough, so it seeped through the vents, it seeped through the feet. It really got everywhere. But I guess that fixed the fact that we poured too much, so hey, we did it, gamers. So I'm actually going to leave all of the tape in because of the previous reason that I stated, but I'm just gonna cut out the- wait, move your head. Move your head, what are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Um, I'm just gonna cut out this cable here, that way I can actually plug it in. Plugging in the cable was also very frustrating, so I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna jump cut this one, because that was a bit of a disaster. Now you might be thinking, this is nothing, this is just a blue void. But no, if you look really closely, there's O-rings. I don't know if this is gonna do anything, but I decided to set O-rings on all of the standoffs. But, uh... Gasket mount, I guess? I got this idea from Keyboard, but I think he did it a lot better. 
Anyways, with all of the standoffs gasketized, it was time to actually put the whole thing together. I was very, very worried that it would fit, or not fit, I guess. Oh yeah, and you're probably wondering about what happened to the plate. Uh, it cured perfectly fine, and there's now a nice silicone layer across the whole plate, which is pretty dope. I think this is gonna work really well. If it fits. Which? Come on, please. Give me the, give me the money shot. Is it gonna, oh wow. Yeah, no, it actually fit together pretty well. That's great. But the next question is, is it still gonna work after all those mods? Okay, trial to see if it sets itself on fire. It actually works, hold on. I don't see any lights, Dad, at least. Yeah, the side glow works. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it actually works. Well, hopefully. Now, if I had a subscriber, every time you guys ask me to review Akko CS switches, I'd be at 250k already. So make sure you subscribe. In this case, I saw lavenders and I thought, oh, this must be like the lavender linears and just bought it without really thinking. They were tactile, but they were also only $13.99 for 45 and they had one day shipping. So for these really good switches, it was under $30. I was expecting not to be a big fan of these, but the tactile bump isn't actually that overwhelming with how light the spring is. So that was good. Also, I lubed these up off camera with Crytox 205G0 but they don't really need it. Anyways, here's where we ran into one of our first big issues, is these are incredibly hard to get into these hot swap sockets. Like, it took around an hour, and my thumb and wrist now hurt so badly. Oh, also, I lubed these stabilizers. Like, boom, there they go, they're lubed now. And I was expecting these stabilizers to be really, really bad, like irredeemably ticky, but I just added a little bit of tape under each of them to reduce some of the rattle. And I did my standard stabilizer modding this. No holy mod or anything weird. You'll hear it in the final sound test, but these things actually turned out just as good as Duroc plate mount stabilizers. That might not mean anything to some of you, but good stabilizers can make or break a keyboard, so that was pretty important. I literally lost my quietest keyboard challenge because the stabilizers were ticking. This is so sad. Sorry. For the keycaps, I'm keeping with the budget trend, and I've actually used these keycaps before, so I knew they'd be decent. These are the Double Shot ABS Glingling keycaps. Basically, they only work for 10 keyless or full-size keyboards, so nothing with any weird layouts. But they are surprisingly decent for only being 22 US dollars. They ain't great, but I know most people like the sound of higher profile keycaps, and these are pretty high profile. Now, the fact that they're decent quality and double shot and cheap and on Amazon, that's good enough for me. Some of them did have broken stems, but they worked just as well. So let me just go ahead and plop these on the keyboard real fast. I was listening to copyrighted music, so no sound effects there. Oopsie doopsie. Speaking of copyrighted music, click that link in the top right to listen to my copyrighted music. Hey, support me. Anyways, the keyboard was built. It came in at around 95 US dollars, which is under budget. Yeehaw. And that's including the silicone and everything. So it's way cheaper if you don't get that. It's got epic RGB gamer time. Like this is a pretty cool keyboard for the price. Granted, it was incredibly frustrating to build because of those hot swap sockets, but yeah. But is it good enough to win? So we put all the keyboards up on Twitter and let you guys vote. We had a blind sound test and a blind picture test. So let's see who wins each category. I hope it's me, I hope it's me. Just based off looks alone, we have a clear winner with what? 793 votes. That's 54% of all the votes. Louis Toll, congratulations. Oh, oh, shit. But that's just, that's just the look. Okay, we didn't win the looks category, which is sad. Louis did a great job. But did we win the sound? I think we will. Sound alone? First place with 29% of the votes, Louis Toll. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> but, but, okay, no. something interesting oh. is, for second place, we have two people, Hippiotech and Glarsus. Oh, what? Yeah. For 28% of the votes each. So you know what? Second place. That's fine. Against all these good contenders, that's pretty great. This was a super fun challenge, and I had a lot of fun making it. If you guys had fun watching it, then make sure you go check out the other contenders, and... Follow me on Twitter, that way you can vote and help me win next time. Please, go. I need to beat them. Finally, a special thank you to all my supporters on YouTube that make this channel possible. If you want to help out, then consider clicking that join button down below. I hope this proves anybody can build a budget keyboard, and money isn't everything. <laughs>